Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by. So, I didn't sleep well last night, as I'm sure most of you didn't either. I've been looking over the election results as they've been coming in and making sense of the data and looking at the responses people have to the situation that we have in front of us. While there hasn't been a declared winner at this time, at the point of recording it's 5.06 a.m. for me, the projected winner is Donald Trump. There's still votes to be tallied, and who knows, we might have another Georgia stop the steal sort of event out of Fulton County and out of Atlanta. But as it stands, Trump is the projected winner of the presidency. And beyond that, Republicans are slated to win the Senate, and perhaps slated to win the House. And lots of you are looking for someone to blame. You want to point the finger and say that if this happened, we wouldn't be in this situation. You want to try and take some of this awful feeling off of yourself. I would find in times of strife it's better to help others, to assure your friends and get them the assistance they need. And certainly people are going to need that in the upcoming months. But I understand a lot of you are angry, and perhaps finding the right person or source to blame can bring you to a point of healing and we can move on. Because there is someone to blame, but it hardly has been brought up in the conversations that I've seen. So we'll get there eventually, but I want to start with who you shouldn't be blaming. Um, the big one is going to start this off with, uh, don't blame third-party voters. I know a lot of you like to make this whole claim about voting third-party is actually a vote for the other team, and that's, it's like you get put in this super position, like you're Schrodinger's voter. I guess my third-party vote is actually three votes, because it's not just for my person, it's for the other person that you're not supporting, too. If you actually look at the data from these states, the votes that came in, you could take every single third-party all the splintered off left-leaning socialist ones, even the American libertarian parties, and if you combined them and applied them to the Democrat votes, they didn't flip anything. So you can't blame third-party voters for voting for their preferred party when it wouldn't even have affected your end goal. Some people are trying to find the minority group to scapegoat. The Onion even made a funny video about this that whichever party lost the election was already planning on which minority demographic they were going to scapegoat. And a lot of you are trying that, but until we get some actual you know, exit poll data about demographics with the voting, we can't really tell. But once this stuff comes out, I'm almost certain it's going to be what you expect. 80 to 90% of the black vote is gonna to go to Democrats. Probably 60% of the Latino vote is gonna to go to Democrats. And the people who carry the Trump vote are probably gonna be white people. White men and white women are more than likely going to be 75% of who voted for Trump. But we don't have these exit polls yet. Once they come out, we can look at them then, and I'm sure those will be the results that white people carried this election for Trump. You can't really blame it on the funding either. Even though you had the richest man in the world, Elon Musk, bankrolling Trump's campaign, the Harris campaign received massive donations. A billion dollars in donations went to the Harris campaign. Not the Biden campaign. It was when Harris entered the race. And they still lost. You know, all the ground efforts, all the flashy ads, all the arenas that were rented and packed, it didn't count for anything. You can't blame it on the funding because they had all the funding that they could have needed. But you can blame it on the Democrats. You can blame it on the DNC. You can blame it on anybody who's been in that party for longer than 25 years, I would say. You can especially blame it on the Clintons. Democrats didn't learn their lesson in 2016, and they got lucky in 2020 because they still didn't learn their lesson. And now we're getting the final end result of this. You can't campaign on not being Donald Trump. You can't win that way. You can't court moderate Republican voters because they don't want your positions. The current data that we have shows that in 2020, about 6% of registered Republicans swung and voted for Biden. This year, it's looking like it was closer to 5%. All of their efforts at reaching across the aisle did nothing for them. If you look at polls about how voters considered the policy choices and positions of either candidate, you had people saying Kamala Harris was more liberal for their taste more than 50% of the time. And for someone who has spent their entire campaign trying to say how they're this centrist, everything is going to stay the same, we're going to reach across the aisle, I'm going to have Republicans in my cabinet, well, I sure hope she's happy because there's going to be a lot of Republicans in the cabinet now.
you can't blame the people for not resonating with the message that you were giving to them because people don't want the same thing. Democratic efforts domestically have been insane for the last four years. Looking strictly at domestic affairs and matters of the economy, we have the lowest inflation of G7 countries. Well, American manufacturing jobs were brought back under Biden. Labor rights were improved under Biden. You had all major stock indices reach all-time highs. And you had employment at the lowest it's ever been in U.S. history. And you still threw it away because your messaging wasn't that you can keep improving on these things. It was only that you're not Donald Trump because your campaign wasn't focused on the people who these policies were benefiting. You were only seeking to pull people from Republicans rather than speak to your own base, rather than speak to the people who want to support these policies. The real downside to all of this is I don't know that the Democrats will learn their lesson. I think they're going to start throwing minority groups under the bus. Considering how much Republicans spent on anti-trans campaigns during this election cycle, I'm sure there are people who are going to blame transgender people for why Democrats lost. And if that's where this party wants to go, I see no reason for you to keep supporting them. For them to throw away this monumental lead, it feels like snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. So if you want somebody to blame, you can blame the Democrats. Some of this map data does look insane with the massive shifts that this country has moved right as far as individual voting districts and stuff like that. And I know that can seem very scary. It's hard to see a light at the end of the tunnel, I'm sure. You might not know what exactly to do next or how to move forward, but there's actually a line in the boondocks that I'm reminded of that when you don't know what to do and you can't do nothing, you do what you can. And we all need to do that right now. We need to look out for each other. We need to keep each other safe. If you're someone who doesn't feel safe in your area, because of the changing demographic, because of certain laws that were passed. Yes, I don't think there's any harm in you leaving. I don't think there's any harm in you getting somewhere where you can live a full life. Don't let anybody try to guilt trip you out of that either. For the time being though, I would just ask that you try and stay calm. Tune out if you need to for a couple of days. This is a lot that we're dealing with right now and if you need time to process all this, you've still got time before Inauguration Day comes. You know, that's not until January. And who knows? Maybe we will get another stop to steal out of Georgia. All I can ask is that you take care of yourself and take care of the people that you love. Make sure that they know that you love them. And I guess until we get the official call for this election, y'all try to have a good day.